Need a secure and scalable way to upload images from your Angular app to Azure Storage? In this video, I will walk you through the complete process from creating the storage account to setting up the API and uploading images, all the way to saving the images in the user's profile. Hello friends, I am Karthik from Lensmart Coding and with over 16 years of experience in IT, I help developers master Angular, Azure, Web APIs and more. Today, I am showing you how to securely upload user images from an Angular app to the Azure storage using a .NET Core Web API and link it to the user's profile in your database. First, we will create an Azure storage account and set up a container with anonymous access. Then we will configure a .NET Core Web API to upload the image using the storage account connection string. Finally, I will show you how to build a simple Angular component with reactive forms to upload the image from the UI. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more tutorials like this. Come let's get started. Alright, so you need to log into portal.ashu.com. Once you log into portal.ashu.com, you will end up on this dashboard. All what you have to do is, you need to go and search for storage account in the search. If you do this, you will see something like this. Click on storage account. And I already have four storage accounts, so that's why it is showing like this. But the second one that I'm highlighting is the one that I already created and implemented it, and that's what is used in the real website. But I'm going to show you from first, and then I'll also walk you through what is inside this. So first thing you have to do is click on create. It will take you to the uh, it will take you to the blade where you need to put all of the required informations. So here, there are a lot of things to be configured, but I'm going to keep it simple. So we will focus only on the important parts. The rest of all, I'm going to leave it as a default value. The first thing is subscription. I have two subscription. I'm going to choose one of the subscription that I use and resource group. So I will be choosing one of the resource group. You can create a new resource group. And here is the storage account name. For this storage account, you need to give a name within three to 24 characters. It should be unique. So this is something I gave region select the closest region for me it's going to be us east i selected and for primary servers it is asking you for what i am going to use this for uh, the blob storage so i'm going to choose the first one and then once i choose this it is asking me various options from the primary workload so our case is the web application so i'm going to choose the cloud native which is efficient app development and deployment i'm going to choose that and then you have to choose the standard or premium. We'll go with standard for this demo. And I don't need to replicate anything. So LRS is fine. This is just a demo. And then next, I'm going to leave every single thing here as a default value. And in the second part, advanced, there's something called allow enabling anonymous access on individual container. I'm going to choose this here itself. Actually, if you have not done, you can also choose to create anonymous access in a different way. But make sure you choose this. So for our use case, we have a storage account which will allow the anonymous access to the container, which means without any credential or keys, this should be allowed for public because user profiles and any images that we use for our website, it's going to be for public. Like we don't need to do any authentication for that. That's the reason why I choose this. Case to case, it will differ. If you want to secure something and you don't want anyone to access that, you should not be using the anonymous access, okay? And then I'm going to leave every single thing as default. Make sure you have the hot tag here. Then next, networking, everything default. You don't need anything else here. Next, leave it. I'm going to keep everything as default value. Go to create, review and create. Go to review and create. It is just doing all of these authentication. Everything looks good, create. So it's going to deploy this. All right, this is deployed. If I go to go to resource, you'll end up here. Now, under the data storage, there's something called containers. So click on containers. Container is basically a kind of a folder. Think in that perspective, okay? It's a main folder. So I'm going to create a container. So I'm going to create a container and name it as images. Images, and here you see anonymous read access. Here also you can prevent it. But because we choose the checkbox on the initial creation itself, it will allow us to create an anonymous container. You see this container with anonymous access. So once I choose this, I will say create. It's successfully created. Basically, here is the place where we are going to upload the images. Okay. Now, if you look at my container, it's the same thing. We have containers. 
under which we have images and site under images all of these images are going to get uploaded now now the next part is under security and networking there is something called access key go to access key there will be key 1 and key 2 basically we can use key 1 all the connections thing so you are going to copy the connections thing here and I can show you because I'm going to delete this anyway see this is the connections thing right you can copy any one of the connections thing this connections thing can be rotated occasionally uh, depending on how much it is compromised so at least six months once or three months once it is supposed to be rotated we will not go deep inside this but basically connections thing you're going to copy from here okay that's it from Azure perspective from Azure storage account perspective only these two changes you have to do okay so before we jump on to the coding of the angular and the dotnet code if you go to my github repository which is here i'm going to give you the link you can go and search under the repository online so you will see online course ui and online course api these two will be the angular and the dotnet core 8 project so you're coding all the so all of the coding that you see here will be here so don't worry about the coding so let's focus only on the implementation so I have opened up the .NET Core Web API. This is .NET Core 8 and uh, I'm going to open up the controller that we are going to use. So this is the controller which is exposing an endpoint and that endpoint will accept an image and that image will be eventually uploaded to the Azure storage. So let's see what and all we need. We have an endpoint called update profile. Okay. What it is expecting us, it is, it is expecting a model which is taking from the form body. So so it is expecting a model as an input and that is coming that has been taken from the from form from the form okay it's not from body or the request it's from the form so let's go inside and see what and all we have so we have a property called user id biographic information which is a string and then i form file this is important i form file is the one which is accepting the picture now so this is the model what we are doing is we are checking the picture is available or not if the picture has been uploaded from the ui which means then we use this team we copy the image into the steam all right after that we are calling a servers like a, a, a method inside a servers and we are sending the name and the picture so the steam we are sending as an input and the name of the file so let's take a look at what do we have here all right, so we have something called uh, Azure Blob Storage Service that I created. In this, what we have to do is we have to use Azure Storage Blob namespace. And that so that's coming from Azure Storage Blob package. So you need to install this package. Once you install this package, I will explain you what it is here. So what we have to do is in the constructor, we are going to take the connections thing. If you remember, I told you to copy the connection string from the access key, right? So that connection string is in app settings.development.json. So basically in the app settings, we have something called Azure Blob Storage and inside, inside that we have something called connection string. So that is what we are taking it. So we have the connection string, pass that to the constructor of this class. We get an instance of the blob service client. Now in this method, what we are doing is we are going to call a method called get blob container client that's an instance that we are getting we need to pass the container name we already configured the container name as images because that is what we created in the azure storage account right so we have the container name here we are passing it if you look at this right we're passing it so once we have that we will use this method actually this is not required this is not required because we know for sure the container is created but basically what this does is it will go and see if the container is not created it is going to create the container for us which is images now we have both next is we will use this instance and call get blob client pass the file name then we get the blob client and then we get the blob client instance now using the steam that we have we are going to upload to it if you pass it through here which means it will overwrite if the same image name is there that's why it is true okay so if you hover it it will tell you what is the uh, you know see override if you say true it will override the file which is what th that is what we want and then we are sending it back the URI so the calling the who is calling this one it is calling from the controller right so let's call the controller which is the user profile controller so once we have the url back and then we call the internal method to update into our database so if you look at this 
this is calling the repository and then repository is in turn calling the user profile table and then it will update the one of the property called profile picture url it will save the changes so this is what it will finally look this is the table and we have something called profile picture url column and there it is going to save the image of the url now this is the dot and curve api coming back to angular we have a component under the components so if you see under the okay so under the com user section for this project there's something called update user profile so if i go to the component update profile what do we have we have some simple things so we are using the reactive forms and this is angular 18 standalone so in the component if it is a standalone it will be mentioned as standalone true because it is standalone true all of the required modules will be imported in the import section of the component itself so for our reactive form we want common module form module for manipulating the form and the final one is the reactive form modules reactive form modules is the one which is required for using the reactive form now let's go through the code quickly we have the form we have a variable called profile form it's of form group and then what do we have we have some basic uh, variables that is set uh, to preview the image and to see the selected image right and then in the constructor we inject the form filter and then the service for profile service like to call the web api that we just built right and then the other services right other services like toaster servers login service login services basically you know it is going to tell you whether you logged in or not now we will initiate the form which is the profile form using only one biographic so because in the api you saw it is using user id bio information and the picture so the form will just have the biographic information which is a text which is a text of who you are right okay so for us to upload the image all what we want is that we just discussed about the form right so after this form we have a method like all of the other things are like basic uh, validation method but let me quickly go through only the important thing on file selected on file on file selected is as an event as a function whenever the file is selected from the ui which i'm going to show you it will take the file and put it into the selected file okay so the selected file and then what it is going to do is there's a class called file reader in the file reader we are initiating a function so on load whenever the the file is loaded this function is executed basically the preview url which is the local variable will have the result of the target one now reader dot read as data url okay that's an inbuilt method of this file reader we are going to pass the selected file once we pass this once it loads completely your preview url will have the data which is going to show you the image of whatever you uploaded right now whenever you hit on submit what we are going to do is we are going to create a form data that is only important okay in we have to create a form data and then append all the properties we have three properties if you remember picture property user id and bio property we need to this is the key here so the key value pair so key and then the value was nothing but the bio information value and then the user id value and then the selected file selected file is the whole file okay now we will pass this form data to the upload file method okay and that is going to post it to the web api that we created once it returns it will say successfully created so coming back to this one this is pretty easy all what we have is a form with a form group that's a form group name on ng submit we're calling the on submit okay the important thing that you need to understand here is the input file so input of type file we have a id and class and like on change we call the on file selector that's the event which is reading the file okay so once we have all of these things this preview url will have the data that is where we show the image and on submit it is going to fire that so let's take example so let's take a look at the demo all right so this is the deployed version so i'm going to go to the deployed version so that we can see the real web api so if i go to the smart learn by kartik dot azure websites dot net okay so i logged in that's why my image is automatically coming you see this my image is coming so i'm going to go to this update profile which will bring up the 
component we just discussed. So it has a bioinformation which is a reactive form and we have a input type of type file and then a preview image. Whatever you select, the image is going to show here. So I'm going to click here, choose the image, which is shown as a preview, right? And then if I do an update profile, the profile gets updated. You see this, the image was successfully updated, but this image is not gone. But if I just refresh, the image got updated automatically, right? Because this is the one which is saved in the Azure storage account now. So, so don't worry about the code. It's all there in the GitHub repository. And if you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding.